Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel and thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to be going over the comments for two episodes of The Chosen. So we're going to go over episode two of the Shabbat and also episode three, Jesus Loves the Little Children. But before we get started, I want to say thank you again for everyone coming on over to my channel and joining in on this discussion for obviously the show that we all truly love with the deepest part of our souls, right? So thank you again and again and again. <laughs> I'm super grateful for all of you and I'm excited to be able to talk about this with someone for a change or more people than just one for a change. Uh, I am at my husband's work and don't you worry, other than the fact that the light shining on my head is like cuckoo crazy bright, we are alone. Okay, it's just me and my hubs. We are still practicing social distancing. Let's get started with the very first comment on the Shabbat. We have Anne Mudrunner, and I remember you, Anne, from my last vlog, and thank you so much for coming back to hang out with me. So she says, I love that you want to discuss The Chosen. I'll be with you at each and every discussion. Yes. I love this show because this is what the world needs. You ask some questions of us. I always try my best to find the brighter side of any situation. If you look hard enough, you'll find the good. Being a follower of Jesus, I feel we need to be encouraging to everyone, especially those who are down and out. I feel especially thankful when God causes my path to cross with someone who has nothing. Then they know that when I'm helping and encouraging them, they know it's from my heart. I'm not after their vast empire, LOL. I have something to say about that, but I'll continue. Okay, so <laughs> I'm trying not, not to interrupt myself, which I just did. Okay, when they thank me profusely, then I sincerely say that God brought our paths together. I do these things because that's how I shine my Savior's light. I share that Jesus loves them. I love to root for the underdog because I believe God can do great things things. I grew up with wonderful, loving, God-fearing parents. I'm raising my kids to stand up for the downtrodden. I hope I said that word right. <laughs> I've seen my kids' compassion, their generosity to those in need. You asked how having people in your life who love you, support you, and believe in you impacts your life. It makes all the difference in the world. I'm thankful for your wonderful vlog of the most awesome show ever, The Chosen. Yes. By the way, every time you laugh, I laugh. You're adorable. <laughs> oh my goodness. That was very sweet of you to say. I think my laugh is a little crazy, so I th thank you. Like, seriously, you guys are making me feel good about myself. <laughs> thank you. Um, well, what a blessing to have you here, Anne, and being a part of I almost want to call it my chosen tribe. <laughs> I have so many things to say because this was this was a great comment. It's beautiful. It has so many different layers. So if you don't mind, I'm just going to take it piece by piece. Um, I love that you say that you look at the brighter side of any situation, and I try to do that as well. There are times where I literally will get so down, but I always pick myself up. How do they say? My bootstrap, is that right? I pick myself up by my bootstrap? I don't know, I can't, you know what? I always mess these phrases up, but I always pick myself up and dust myself off. Always, 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 no matter how hard things get. That's for sure. So I'm glad to hear that you're like that. And then you're talking about what you're teaching your kids. And I really truly believe that kids learn by example. We don't even realize it sometimes what we're doing and how they pick up on it. And then they start to emulate what we do. It's crazy. And it's hard. It's, it's hard because as an adult, we have a lot of things that we have to deal with from day to day. I remember I just couldn't wait to get out of high school. I was like, yes, I want to be an adult so bad. And adulting is not that much fun <laughs> at all. You were also talking, Anne, about how helping other people and not being after their vast empire. And that again is to me talking about being genuine and things coming from your heart and you're doing things because you're truly doing it for the right reasons as opposed to having like an agenda or like you're giving to someone but you're not asking for anything in return. And that's one of the things that I'm seeing on The Chosen about Jesus, how he gives so compassionately and there's no hidden agenda anywhere at all this group of people here with The Chosen are showing me <laughs> different from what I'm used to seeing, you know? Get used to different has a lot of different layers here, doesn't it? That, that's why this is so profound and the connection 
between the people who love The Chosen and like what we're doing right now is so valuable. And lastly, to touch on a couple of the other things that you said is rooting for the underdog is absolutely so important so important and I really wish there were more people that could do that instead of seeing an underdog and deciding you know what I think I see an opening here where I can take advantage of this person and I've seen it time and time again not only in my life but in other people's lives and I, I just really want that to not be a part of um, our world but sadly it is so we need more people like you Anne. <laughs> a lot more people like you and lastly lastly <laughs> i loved when you said um about people supporting you and believing in you and how it impacts you and how it really truly is the most important thing it makes all the difference in the world all the difference in the world and then where are the people so then that's Anne. you know i feel like that's your mission right um who don't have that children that don't have that and their fight is 10 times harder and when we talk about Mary like she was ready to give up like literally she was ready to give up and wouldn't that have been sad if Mary Magdalene actually did jump off that cliff you know because she had a lot to offer Jesus I mean especially since she was there till the very very end with him all right, let's go to the next comment, and that is from Anne Marie Stickle. She says, I love your descriptions and your questions about who we are. Yeah, they're thought provoking, hopefully, and I appreciate it. Thank you, Anne. It's lots of Anne's. My mom's name is Anne. All right, so Shelly Gregory, it just gets better. And you know what, Shelly, it does. It, everything just keeps getting better each episode. And if anyone wants to join me, I was kind of thinking we could do our own watch party here coming up soon. So stay tuned because I think that'll be something we could do is do another rewatch of everything because I really want to go back and rewatch everything all over again. <laughs> My friend Michelle, Michelle Edwards, wow, I'm so grateful that you are covering this series. I love your insightful views of the characters and I also agree that we need to be better human beings and how high could we soar if we had a loving support system surrounding us. I'm trying my best to make a difference in the world and I know my heart is too big, but I will continue to fight the good fight until God tells me, well done, good and faithful servant. Thank you, Corinne, for being you. Eternally grateful. Well, Michelle, I am so grateful for you. I hope that we'll see you back here again. I feel like I haven't seen you in a while and I do miss you. And the gentle souls like Michelle and Anne and many of the people that have made comments here, I feel, what did she say, fight the good fight? Yeah, fight the good fight. And that's not easy. And I think I mentioned it in one of my other vlogs that, you know, when you're taking the path sometimes uh, of more resistance because you're trying to do the right thing, your path is harder and you have a lot more prickly weeds that you have to like push away from you. And there's a lot of dark shadows that like to pop out at you every now and again. And that is what makes it tough. But we need people like y'all. The world needs people like y'all. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna move to episode three, Jesus Loves the Little Children. Our first comment comes from Shelly Gregory again. Hey, Shelly, thanks for coming back. Uh, she says, I absolutely adore the way they give time to the children. They capture their innocence and eagerness to learn from Jesus. Jesus teaches them very important lessons in a very simplistic way for example eye for an eye mm -hmm. I agree with you a hundred percent children are very pure and like I was saying earlier they're very vulnerable and I think that's why Jesus loves the children so much because they can be shaped and formed I think it's a delicate sometimes slippery slope in the direction that we choose to go. For example, let's say a child is raised with parents that are screaming and yelling and fighting in front of them all of the time, or their parents don't communicate. You know, they are learning that a home life can be hostile, or they're learning the lack of importance of communication. 
it's hard because I know with me, like with my family, with my parents growing up, things were very, very difficult, very, very complicated. And I really struggled in my 20s when it came to relationships. I have a very strong will. <laughs> so I feel very blessed that I met the husband that I did, the man that I did. The way that we shape our relationship is much different than what I was raised to see. I don't feel like I always see that happening with children. And I always hope that, you know, they come from a hostile upbringing that maybe they will learn on their own, but sometimes that's not always the case. I, I do love to see here how Jesus is shaping them and he's, you know, like the little kid with the eye for an eye. Had Jesus not said that to him, would he become a vengeful child? Okay, so Anne Mudrunner, she's next. Yay, I'm glad you're back. You're so insightful. Well, thank you. <laughs> when Jesus was praying to his Abba Father, I did feel the weight of what was before him and it was weighing on his mind. It seemed to me that Jesus was seeking time with his father so he could feel strengthened. In the other scene, when Jesus got teary-eyed when the kids were reciting the prayer, I felt that he felt much love for them. He was so proud of them. On another note, you're doing a fantastic job setting boundaries for your kitties. <laughs> Great job. I totally love your pets too. You rock. And you're fun. Like you're just so sweet and you say the nicest positive things. Like the things that you're saying of how you are with other people, you are right here in these comments. You literally are. And this is another reason why I like doing it this way because I feel like the community gets strengthened, if that makes any sense. And I'm like, I would love to know Anne. I'm excited now that I have met Anne. You know, even though I haven't seen you physically, I'm talking to you online and I really like it. <laughs> I, and Shelly too, it's the same people, which I really love. Anne Marie Stickle is next. And she was in the last one. Thank you again for commenting. She says, I identify with Mary too. I just wanna have that complete change that she had. She is so lovely now. I love watching the children be loved by Jesus, wow. Yeah, now that was a small comment, but it's still really profound. Like, obviously we all love Mary. I mean, how can you not love her? I just want to have that complete change that she had. Oh, so I hope you don't feel like you haven't been able to have that change, but you can too. You can too. You really can, Anne. I know you can. <laughs> um, but, but just watching that is very inspiring, right? And I think sometimes when you see people go through that, you see their story, it just kind of like musters up something within you. Like it kind of wake awakens your strength and you can you can muster strength from the people that inspire you, like Mary Magdalene, um, Jesus. You know what I mean? When you see them and, and how they handle things and how they do things and that inspires you, that gives you that fire inside your belly to, to do the same, if that makes any sense. They're your heroes, right? I mean, I guess if you kind of think like, who's your hero? And how, how would that hero handle that situation? Or how, how would Jesus, what would Jesus do? <laughs> what would Mary Magdalene do in this situation? You know, that type of thing. Very good, that was a great comment. I love it, thank you, Anne. Raina is next. Your reviews are so heartfelt. And don't worry, The Chosen makes most of us get a little teary-eyed. And to Enzo and the cat. So, so it's like a little kiss, a little kissy face. Oh, you're so sweet. And thank you for, for actually noticing my dog's name. That's really sweet. Thank you. My animals are everything to me. I feel like they're like the most beautiful, gentle souls. And I just want to love on them constantly all the time. I just, I love animals <laughs> and I love children. <laughs> We're talking about Jesus loves little children. I love the little children and I love the little animals so much. I can't. I can't, my heart just goes boop, 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 you know what I'm saying? <laughs> thank you, Raina. I feel like you're a new comment, a new friend, so thanks for coming along this crazy journey. Okay, so my friend Michelle again, she says, wow, another awesome episode. I'm very emotional and a little bit lost for words, but I wanted to thank you for covering this important series. I've always been a peacemaker in people's lives, and I love children and the elderly too. Yes, the elderly, yes. I've taken care of them for years as a caregiver. That's awesome. I left a very high paying career in quality assurance to help others when I first found God in 2005. That's profound. I have a huge heart and have always wanted to be a voice to the voiceless. 
animals, children, and elderly. I am grateful to have found you guys and look forward to talking more about the series in Jesus. See, like, Michelle, like, you're like me. You basically are saying very similar things to what I absolutely just said. And I forgot about the elderly. How can I forget? Yes. Yes. Exclamation point. Yes. Michelle, I think that that is really profound that you left a quality assurance job to help other people because God inspired you to do so. That is absolutely huge. And we're, you know, we're talking about these people, like the comments that you guys are making, you're making sacrifices for other people, but you're doing it for all of the right reasons. So please keep doing what you're doing. Absolutely, please, you guys keep doing what you're doing, even when the road gets tough. Michelle said, I'm grateful to have found you guys and I look forward to talking more about this series of of Jesus. I'm looking forward to obviously more chosen. I'm looking forward to connecting with you guys continually. I have more things that I want to say. That's the crazy part. I really do because I want to go back to Anne's and Mudrunner because she said something else. <laughs> what did she say? Oh yes. Okay. So Anne Mudrunner, when you were talking about Jesus and when he was getting emotional, I really appreciate you commenting on that because I wasn't really sure what he was feeling at that moment in time and I, I was really really intrigued by it and I really wanted to know but I just couldn't figure it out. So I do think that's a great analogy or um, investigation into what Jesus was feeling that he seemed to be definitely seeking his father and he needed to be strengthened by him. I, I think I saw the Passion of the Christ a long time ago and because I wasn't raised in church there's a lot of things that I, I don't know. Um, but Jesus was like crying and he was scared right before he had to go on the cross. Oh my gosh. I just, I remember it. And I remember thinking, well, Jesus was scared like that? Like it, it made it 10 times harder for me to watch I, what happened to him, but to know how scared he was beforehand just really kicks you in the gut. You know, and so I was just wondering. I want to know what does what is Jesus thinking? <laughs> what goes on in his mind? Because he's such a fascinating being, you know. And I and again, that's what I like about the chosen because maybe we get a glimpse into that through Dallas. He enlightens us in a way where we can really feel what Jesus feels, and we can feel what the disciples feel. It's just so awesome. Well, you guys, I have to sign off right now, but I do want to say again that this is really cool, and I hope that you guys will be around for my next response to your comments, which will be episode four and five. I'll try to put those two together, depending on how many uh, comments that I have, okay? So I will be back with another slew of conversations with you guys, so check out my other videos if you haven't already. If you wanna add a couple comments, go ahead and do so. I'm gonna edit this, get this up, so you'll have some time to make some comments if you so want to talk with me, okay? So this is kind of a discussion, a chit chat, a friendship connection, <laughs> our chosen, tribe aka global army everyone have a blessed day okay and thank you so much for being you bye